this is Kathleen from oldworldfarmhouse.com and today I'm going to show you how to make one of these tie-on slip covers for a Swedish style dining room chair. So let's get started. This is the finished product and I'm just going to take it off. I made these so that I could have something after meals when my kids like to use these as napkins. They still use the chair cover as a napkin. I can just um, throw this in the washing machine and it's as good as new. Um, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is cut your fabric and pin it and then sew it. And that's really all there is to it. I have a piece of fabric here that I'm just gonna lay on the chair Yes, dear. Okay. So if you have a fabric, this one is the same on both sides, so it really doesn't matter. If your fabric is only printed on one side, put the put that side face down to the chair so you're looking at the inside out part when you're pinning. The first thing I'm gonna do is pull this material through the back because I want the back of the chair to have, I want there to be just a little Plain skirt that ends just about here and so I'm, I know I've got enough back here to do that now and allow some for the hem so we're gonna leave that there just go around the rest of the chair and kind of pat into place make sure I have enough fabric kind of everywhere I need it in order to pin I see the front I'm gonna actually pull a little bit more through the back because I've got not waste it, but I think this is enough for it to just cover back it up a little bit. Back it up to here and then I'll hem it so it just comes to the edge of the chair. You know, if you, you can make this as long or as short as you want to, of course. I just want mine to come just to the end of where the actual chair seat goes. Okay, so it's kind of in good shape there. And then here is the part Closer. There we go. This is the tricky part: is to get it so it's cut. It wraps around both of the. What do you call these? Like, I don't know what this part of the chair is called, but uh, po uh, poles. Okay, yeah, we'll call it a pole. <laughs> um, you want to do that, and there has to be just a little bit so that you can fold it over and make a hem. But it can't really be a very generous hem because. Um, then it doesn't lay right on the chair. So this part you just kind of have to Just kind of have to work it a little bit And this is really the The trickiest part if you were using a check fabric It makes it much much easier in a way because you can always you always know you're cutting on a straight line Which is really nice, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look and um so some of the fabric has to go on this side and some of it has to go this side and it all has to lay flat. And I also need to leave just a little bit that will wrap around here that I can fold back and hem so we don't have a raw edge right there. Um, another option, which I didn't do, but I, I saw after I had made these, I watched the um, Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone made a cover for a bench and I'll link it below, but she used um, bias tape for these little tricky areas so to contain the raw edge and I thought, oh, that's what I should have done. Um, but I don't have any bias tape at the moment and um, so I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna do it the way I did it with all the other ones and it worked fine and they've been through the wash several, dozens of times by now and the hem has not unraveled um, even though it is a little bit of a narrow hem. So, here we go, I'm gonna make a cut. I think, right here. Well, I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm not gonna worry. Once I know where, I can just keep following that line. Of course, if you don't have, you know, a fabric with the handy dandy lines, then just do your best to eyeball, eyeball it. 
the kids have lost interest and have left the room. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna push that through and see, okay, how am I doing? I can cut a little more, but I, I wanna keep in mind that I need my hem. And just, you wanna just get it so it's laying nicely and doesn't have any, um, you know, so it's laying the way you want it to lay when you finished result. Okay, so that's, that's, you know, that's pretty good. I'm gonna fold, I'm gonna fold back my hem right now the way I want it to be. Just kind of work that with my fingers. And I might do just another millimeter. Like I said, had I even been aware that you could do this with bias tape, I probably would have done that from the get-go. Um, because then I think you could just make the cut and not even worry about it. But here, pick it up. Okay, so I've got that side cut. That's okay. So now I'm going to do this side of the chair. And again, I'm just going to kind of figure out. I need some of the fabric to go on this side of this little bowl, and some of it to go on the other side. And I think a good place to cut is here. And I'm, I'm just I, I'm eyeballing it. And I'm gonna push it through and I'm gonna keep going. I need a little more. Make it lay the way I want. I've still got quite a bit of fabric here. I'm gonna cut like another check down. And then one more. that through. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's laying pretty much how I want it to lay. And then I have just a, the teeniest, which I've got plenty for a hem, which means I need to cut more because the thing about it is it just doesn't really lay right unless you've got quite a bit of it going one way and then the other. But like I said, bias tape might be a really good option. I'll have to try that on another project. Yeah, see on this side I've got it laying pretty good and then here it's still a little bunchy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut just a tad more and see what that does for me. Okay, I'm gonna turn to the back and see. Yeah. Alright. Okay, so I got that and now I'm gonna cut I again I just I want it to just end. Real simple here at the end of the chair, um, but I need to make a nice hem, which a nice hem could either be uh, two rows or maybe three rows of these because I'm gonna fold over twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my fabric. I like this very simple sort of modest no frills chair cover look. Um, I got the idea from pictures of Lars Soberg's home in Sweden. He had some chair covers like this in a picture of his dining room that I saw. And I just loved how they, you know, they just weren't just kind of, just no frills, literally no ruffles. And I liked that look and it makes them, so, okay, so there we go. I've got that pretty much cut. I've got enough. And now I'm gonna pin this fabric for my hem. Now I've got a big piece here and I'm gonna, I don't need all of that. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna go about three squares out. And then, um, you know, this part here where we cut around the poles, it is, like I say, it's tricky. And if you do it with bias tape, it might be better. I'm not doing it. I'm just gonna sew a very, very narrow hem, like I was saying, but, um, when when you put the ties on the back, that will hold, hide a multitude of sins as well. So I'll, when we get into talking about that, I'll show you how that works. But for now, I'm just, so I'm gonna pin this hem, I'm gonna fold it once, and then I'm gonna fold it twice. And that way the raw edge is really 
in there and I'm just gonna pin it into place and then once I have the entire thing hemmed and pinned, um, then I will take the pins out. I'm gonna hem the, and then I'm gonna roll the side. I don't need a pin there to get in the way. Okay, so then I'm gonna hem up the side and I just roll it once and then twice. And again, with the check fabric, it's very easy to keep a straight line on your hem because you just follow the line of the check. I highly recommend using these kind of pins with the big plastic bulb on the end because then it's easy to see them when you go to take them out. So that's that. And then we get to the other tricky part of the chair cover, which is the corner. You get to the corner here and you get you have all this extra fabric. Okay, go ahead and get to the corner edge of the chair and this part is a little tricky. Um, you're gonna wanna put a dart in here to accommodate this corner so you don't have all this extra fabric. So what you want to do is, you know, put a pin here and then when you go to sew, mark it with chalk so you know where the end of your dart line is. I had no idea how to sew a dart before this project. I had to look up a couple YouTube videos and it, it, it makes no sense to me like how it works, but I just follow the directions and on blind faith and it, and it did turn out. So, but I'll show you how to do it. Um, for now, I'm just going to pin it. This is where we want our dart. And, um, I might draw the lines a little bit. We'll do more of this upstairs when it gets to sew. So we want a dart there, and then we're going to come around the front and pin up our front hem. Again, we have to figure out how long you want it. You know, you could have it. All, you know, all the way here. I like mine. I like mine to be all the way up here because I, I want this little decorative element of the chair to show. So I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna just cut here so that I have a nice. Before I cut, uh, before I pin up that hem, I am gonna go ahead and cut the rest of this fabric over here because it's getting in the way. So here we are at the side of the chair, and again, I'm just gonna say, okay, I want it to go to here. Give myself a nice one and a half to two inch extra fabric to fold in for a hem. So that none of the raw edges are showing, and I have a nice sturdy hem that will withstand lots of washings. I wash these after every meal pretty much. But it's better than living with dirty chairs that are an embarrassment <laughs> when you have company come over. And then this this piece here I'm also going to cut to allow for a nice hem. And all these extra pieces of fabric I might turn into napkins. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Okay, so then again, we're just going to take this and I'm going to do a, another fold. Another fold. For a nice straight hem. Pin it with my plastic tipped pins so I can always see them. Don't accidentally run them through the sewing machine. Then I want this side to be folded up once and then fold it to just here. And pin it. And pin. And 
And again, once you get it started with the check fabric, it's very easy to make sure that you're still going in a straight line, but you know, you can do this with any fabric at all. I love these checked fabrics because they, um, they just give that Swedish look that I'm currently obsessed with. The, if you look at any kind of Swedish traditional decor, they use a lot of checked fabrics and really fun thing that they do, they did back in the 1700s, late 1700s when they had their Gustavian style, which was like a, a riff on French neoclassical style. Um, they didn't, they weren't as cash uh, heavy, have cash rich over there in Sweden. So you'd see they would have um, these, um, where am I going? They would paint their chairs in these light colors. And then often the seat, instead of being a fancy brocade or something, they would put on this checked fabric. And then you have this like high, low juxtaposition that I just love and just works really well for today when we well, we all we all like things more casual and unfussy, unstudied and unfancy, but it gives this like sort of a little gilding and and then what? a plain homespun style check seat. It's it's just I just love that look. And as that Gustavian style filtered down to um, you know the countryside and less out of out of the court. You see that, and if you see, if you look at pictures for that, you see simpler fabrics, but with these quite um, neoclassical shapes, and maybe even you know, painted gilding, not real gilding, but painted. Okay, so here's my other dart. And that's our history class for today. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna make a chalk line, which I might have to redo, but I'm just gonna make it up here, so these are, I think they're called the legs of a dart, and then you, you know how to sew there, just so we don't lose it. Okay, and then now we're gonna turn around and do this front hem, which because of our dart stuff is also uh, a little tricky. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to take this whole thing, you, you get in that, Lars? And I'm going to, again, fold up and up. And I'm going to pin and then I'm going to deal with this extra fabric in a minute on the corner here. After I've pinned my hem. And that's all. Last thing we're gonna do is deal with all of this business. That's, um, I guess we just cut it off then. Yeah, we're gonna cut a little bit of it off because we really don't need that extra fabric. And then we're gonna, again, just make a hem. And fold pin. and pin. Can I pin? I need you to hold the camera. You can pin. Okay, and then again, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut out this scraggly pointy tail, and I'm gonna tuck, Mr. Fucking and scraggly tail. <laughs> fold, and I'm gonna pin that one, so I know that's how I want it to be. And now it's right side out, so you can see how it's gonna look. I'm pretty pleased with it. So now I've got this right side out, and I can figure out I want my um, my tie, I want it to come out like this. Okay, so I'm gonna put it there and pin. Okay, and then I don't really like long ties and I don't really like bows that much. I just kind of want a nice little square knot. If you want a big bow, it can probably whatever. Totally up to you. But I'm just gonna eyeball it here and cut. You mean you're gonna down to the end of the chair? So where's the eyeball? <laughs> In my eye. Very funny. And then I'm gonna take the rest of it and I'm gonna 
take my pin and I want this one to come out from here. So I'm going to pin it da, 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 like so. And yeah, super pin. I can see, is that is it how I want it to lie? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And then I can just kind of figure out not nothing too long. This pin. What evil pin is on going the to other jail. side of the chair? Oh, evil pin is in jail. <laughs> and then you see how that just lays really nice and comes out like so, and like so. Okay, so the next step is to iron our pin hems, and I'm actually going to take out the pins as I steam iron them flat because that makes it much easier when you go to sew. You don't have to remember to take out the pins. I'm sure that if you're a more experienced sewer, maybe you wouldn't have to. I can I'm gonna zoom press in. the dart, which is the, the real pesky part of this project. Oh, uh, what is the dart? This corner area. So I'm, I'm going to, I've got my little chalk line. I'm actually gonna leave my pin, my pin there in case the chalk fades, but I, I am gonna press that so that I, I know that that's the corner I want. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we are going to sew the dart first, which is just a question of taking out the pins and then sewing right along the line that we drew with the chalk downstairs all the way up to the pin that we didn't take out. So Don't here we go. Out that pin. All that line along. Until you get more. Until you get to the pin, and that's when you know that you need to take the pin out real quick. <laughs> and you need to stop right there at that is your point. So you just want to cut that away and leave a little bit so that you can hand tie since you're not going back. Um, and you don't want that little point. You come just tie it you know even once or twice so you have some kind of security there and then there is your dart to me making those is always such a leap of faith but yeah basically if you draw that chalk line um when you're downstairs doing or wherever you are you know pinning it onto your chair it should work great um caravan wants to know if we're done and the short answer is no so the hem along the rest of the chair but that's very straightforward but that is just you know sewing in a straight line no. start out do a couple back stitches yeah, just sew all your hems that you pressed and ironed until everything is sewn together, and that is that.